Hi, this is Carrie with Clay Revolution. Today I'm going to show you how to torch fire Prometheus bronze clay. You're going to need to have a few things with you today to do this. Obviously some Prometheus bronze clay. This piece is ready to be torch fired. It's completely dry and has already been refined and the edges are perfect. You're going to need a small butane torch. This one has a, a head that you can buy separately. I buy these um, just about anywhere. You can buy the can and the head separately. It's very inexpensive to use. The one important thing that you do want to note is it's got a larger nozzle on it than some of the micro torches do. You do want a larger bushier flame when you do these. Okay. You're going to need to have a pair of tongs to pick up the hot piece with and some stainless steel mesh to fire it on top of. If you've got all those things ready, we're ready to get started. Okay, so now we're going to torch fire our bronze clay. The first thing you're going to notice is that I've put down some fire bricks under my stainless steel mesh. This is just to protect my work surface so that I don't do any damage, to catch anything on fire or anything like that. You could use any kind of bricks to do this or cement. Um, I prefer these fire bricks because they're, they're nice and they distribute the heat versus um, containing the heat. You're going to want your tools very close by so that you can reach everything without worrying about any flame damage. You're going to want a little cup of water for quenching, which we'll talk about, your tongs, and your torch. The first stage that we're going to do is called the burn off stage. And what we actually do is burn the binders out of the clay. That's very important for sintering metal properly. If you don't burn all the binders out of this piece, the metal particles will not sinter. So you need to make sure that all the binders are burned out. And the way that that happens is it catches on fire and we just burn them away. So that's the first stage of what you're going to see, and after that is when we begin our sintering. Okay, I'm going to turn the lights off now so you can see this a little bit better. We're going to light our torch by turning the gas on. And just get that to a nice flame that you're comfortable with. It doesn't need to be too big, but you also don't want it to be sputtering. I'm sputtering just a little bit, so there we go. Got my flame ready, and I'm going to catch the piece on fire. So, if you watch the edge of that, see how that's actually burning by itself now? That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the binders burning off. I'm going to start at one end and work that flame across the piece. That's really important and you can see that line developing. That's what I'm looking for so that I know that all of the binders have been burned all the way out. I'm also watching the close edge of my piece and making sure that I don't get that too hot. This orange color is a little bit hot but not bad. We really want it to be more of a red kind of color like that. You can see that red under there. That's really the color that we want bronze to be. It's almost burned off now. That flame over there a little bit. There you go. Now you can see that that has burned off all the way around the entire piece. And I can start my seven minute timer for centering the metal. The color that we are looking for for bronze is very important. Bronze centers, Prometheus bronze, centers at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Copper centers at 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. So we want to make sure that we really hold the correct temperature with our metals. This bronze at 1500 degrees looks kind of a cherry red color. I'm trying to show you that right now. That cherry red. If I keep my piece nice and stable, there you go. Right in there. That is a nice cherry red kind of color. Orange. Like that is too hot for bronze. Okay, that's running closer to the 1700 degree mark. And we really don't want to do that for bronze. 
if it's that color, that kind of black on top color, that's too cool and you won't actually be sintering your metal. So again, cherry red, work your flame kind of in a circle around your piece. You want to keep it nice and consistent the entire time. You don't want a lot of ups and downs and everything in between. So keep that piece nice and slow and consistent temperature the entire time. You definitely want to go seven minutes with your bronze. Sometimes um, if the piece is larger, I'll even go longer than that. But I very rarely ever fire shorter than seven minutes with a piece of bronze. Okay, so we're almost finished now and I want to make sure that all of my tools are very close by because this next step is very important. As soon as I take the flame away, the piece is going to start to develop black oxide on the outside of it. That is the copper reacting to oxygen in the atmosphere. So in order to help us prevent that a little bit or actually just get rid of it, we're going to put that immediately in some water and that will help pop that oxide off the outside. So, I'm going to turn this off and very quickly put that straight in there. You can see that oxide popping off of that surface there. It's exactly what we want. Get rid of those now. I just use my fingers to help it along a little bit. You can see it is on the bronze, it is a substantial amount. So we want to make sure that we get as much of that off there as we can. And we also want to make sure when we're designing our pieces that we account for that. Okay. And make sure you give it a quick little tap there. Make sure it's in it, centered all the way, and we're good to go. Now that you've finished torch firing your copper and bronze pieces, there's a few things that you can look for to make sure that you've done it properly. This is an example of bronze. This is your bronze piece, the color of it, before you fired it. So this is still in clay state. This is your bronze after it's been fired. You'll notice that there is some of the goldish color under it, but there is some pink on the outside. That's some um, copper residue, and that will brush off when you brush these. There is a little bit of black left on here, and that's what we're going to do when we talk about pickling and polishing. We're going to deal with that black oxide. This is an example of a piece of bronze that has been sintered improperly. There's a few different things that happen. Number one, it warps. Number two, it actually starts to disintegrate on the edges. Um, and you'll also notice that the black oxide did not come off as well. So those are some examples of what you could look for for a piece that has not been centered properly in bronze. In copper, it's very similar. This is your copper piece before it's been fired. This is your copper after it has been fired. And your copper, after it has been fired, is a very pink color, but it's got a lot of black residue on the outside. So you just want to make sure that it really does clink when you hit it, um, that it is solid inside. It doesn't sound like it's going to thunk or anything along those lines. Okay. This is a piece of copper that's been over-fired or fired too hot. The, again, you can see if I hold this up, the outside of this has actually started to disintegrate and fall apart. There's blistering on the back. So those are some things to watch for. This has been over-fired. So after you've double-checked that they're centered properly, Take them to the sink with a brass brush and just brush off that powder on the outside and you'll start to see that beautiful shiny metal under there. There's a ton to polishing, so we're going to make a separate video for that one. 
but you can see this is a very very simple polish these were brushed originally and then just thrown into a tumbler and came out these gorgeous colors and nice and shiny and simple simple to do so make sure you check out the polishing video when you get a moment and for any other information you might need visit clayrevolution.com thank you